Scott. This is part two of a four-part video series I created to show you how I modified my RK 1UP cabinet to use the 19-in-1 board that contains lots of classic arcade games that run on a horizontal monitor. This video is part of a series of videos I've created related to the RK 1UP cabinets. In this video I'll show you how I created the speaker panel, the J panel, and the control panel which is based on the Williams multi-game layout. Let's get started. All right, we're going to now take the J panel or the speaker panel. We're going to attach the two speakers and the two buttons, the service and the test button. So we flip that over. Uh, we're going to use our four inch eight ohm speaker and a uh, the best bet is to have these lugs pointing inside when we it'll help whenever you put the wiring harness in there. Uh, once again, the bolts we're going to use is a half inch 8 32. Got them for lows for like 240 a box of 12. And uh, the associated nuts, the 832 stainless steels, box of 12 nuts for like 240. And then uh, just remember, I, I've spray painted these with a black mat just to try to camouflage it whenever uh, you see the other side so uh, we just take these uh, put them there put the screw through Okay, and that's all you gotta do. Of course, I'll do the other two and mount to here and I'll do the same thing uh, for this speaker. All right, there we have it. So that's what it looks like on the back side. And that's what it looks like on the front side all right so the speakers are installed once again just make sure these lugs are pointing on the inside toward the buttons it'll make uh, the wiring a lot easier down the road so now we're going to install the buttons I just chose black and white you could choose any color you want it doesn't matter which one service or test it's just your preference um, when you get these buttons these these uh nuts won't be on them I just put them on there to make sure I had all my parts so uh, I'm just unscrewing them now um, so you just put them through the hole and you, you take the nut and you screw the nut on and you screw it all the way down all right now we do the next button Rinse and repeat. We just put this plastic nut on it, screw it all the way down. Okay, so I've got these screwed in. That's what it looks like from the front. Now, I don't have these super tight, but I've got them tight enough where uh, if we want to move it around, we can. Uh, once, and you know, you just retighten the nut. So uh, the next piece is the switch. And once again, I'm just going to do this once in this video. This is a layout of switch. When you press that button, it's going to have a foot. It's going to come up and press this, uh, I guess you call it tan or brown knob. And that's what makes the switch work. So you push the button and a foot comes up and it presses back and clicks it. So this has got to go down so it hits that foot. 
At the top will be this uh, connector here. It's got a 90 degree bend. That's for our black wire or ground or common. And then these buttons, let's see if you can read it here. Um, I'm going to try to get that close in here. All right, so you'll see where this is like COM for common or ground. And this one is normally open, and NO, and the top one right there is NC for normally close. Now, remember this is flipped upside down like this when you put it together. So we're going to wire the ground or common and the normally open, the NO, so that when you push the button, you're going to make it go into the close and you'll make a connection. So it's going to connect the black wire on the common to the normally open wire and close the circuit. So when you press the button, you're just closing that circuit. All right, so that's how it works. And that's how we set these up onto the buttons. And when we wire them, the black common or ground goes here. And then the lines go onto this top one. We will not, for this project, we don't use the normally close. We're using the normally open, the NO. All right, so to put those on, make sure it's you got your brown button on the way down. Put this bottom one on the circle nipple thing and you just rotate it down. Lift this one out of the way just a little bit and then it snaps in place like that. You got the little handlers on the back, but there's a little nipple on this side and a little nipple on this side. So you put the bottom one in first and then you rotate it down and the top one will click in. So I'll do that again on the black one. So we want the nipple down. Let's see my hands in the way. There's the nipple right there. That's down. And we put the lower one into there and then we just rotate it down and it clicks in. All right, now notice how these are all different directions. We're gonna have them going in one direction. It just makes wiring it easier. And uh, there you go. So we may make them all come, so we may make it look like this, all right? So, but you know, just by adjusting um, the tension on this uh, nut, the plastic nut, you can move these around and tighten the nut back down. All right, so that is the speaker panel or the J panel. And there's your working buttons, the service and the test buttons that we'll need to set the soft dip switch settings in the 19 and one board. All right, one last note on the speaker panel here. Um, if, if you remember, and I'll show you pictures on here, these slats inside of these used to be brown like this. So just to hide it a little bit, I went ahead and spray painted these. I, well, I dismantled everything. So you wanna do this before you put these parts on. So I taped the front of this, taped the front of that, and then I taped off everything but the exposed. And then I came through with, this is the same paint I used. This is that uh, matte black Fusion Krylon. I got this from Lowe's. I don't remember what it cost, five or six bucks. This is the same paint I used on uh, the screw heads when I painted these from stainless steel to black. Uh, but I just went in and, you know, uh, just spray paint it sh sh lightly. You know, I, th I think I did two or three coats. It's better to go light than heavy because if you go if you go heavy, you're gonna get runs. So go light, do a fan approach. You know, don't start right on it. Start off of it and then come into it and go go all the way through it. So you want your tape, the blue tape area, kind of big because you're gonna fan into it. Okay, and uh, like I said, do two or three light coats instead of one heavy coat so you don't get any runs. But that will hide all that when that goes into. Uh, my cabinet so it looks a lot better like that than having the brown like that showing now on this speaker panel I keep telling you uh, you know up front there's no up or down you could flip this either way so if you want the white button it doesn't matter if this is test or service it's all your preference this could be red and blue it doesn't matter right it's your preference um, but one of the reasons I told you to put these posts on the inside is because this makes it very, without having to remove all these screws and moving everything around, 
you can make this the top this way or you can make the top this way okay but you don't have to move these from down here to up here ideally if this is your bottom it's best to have these lugs down here but if all of a sudden you wanted this bottom to be your top for whatever reason you come up here and your speaker wires would be pointing up here so we want the speaker wires in the middle now why would you not do the same here because once this is installed in your cabinet these buttons here you just barely loosen that thread and you can move these around uh, fairly easily so it's not that big a deal to do this while it's in the cabinet it's a big deal to, bigger deal to make these change in the cabinet so we just put the lugs pointing toward the middle like that to keep them neutral so you can switch this around any way you want all right one more thing on the speaker panel here uh, when I was soldering the wires onto the JAMA harness connector I went in and soldered the black uh, into the minus and the red into the plus on the speaker uh, I, I solder these instead of using connectors because I would have had to add a connector here and then push the connector onto these and you have a chance of breaking these off or if you make your own connector you could make a bad one so uh, I just solder them on the speakers it makes it a lot easier and then these other ends they'll just push into the amplifier no problem all right now we're going to talk about uh, populating the control panel so um, first thing I, I did is I need the buttons so I'm gonna just lay out my buttons like this so there's my two player my one player buttons right there and then uh, I want green for my smart bomb which goes over here I want red for my fire um, I want yellow for my thrust I'm going to choose white for the Invisio for uh, Stargate I'm going to choose blue for my hyperspace and then for reverse I'm going to use orange okay and uh, I'll turn this over once I put all the buttons in then we'll figure out how to do the joysticks because the joysticks uh, I got to make sure that template fits in here with the, where all the buttons fit so I'm gonna install similar to what I did the speaker panel with the service and test buttons I'm gonna install all these buttons and then we'll come back okay I'm now finished uh, attaching the buttons on here looks pretty good uh, these buttons by the way have no direction you can and when you, you know they're universal but when you hit the player one player two button you got to make sure the the you know the icon is standing straight up like that so uh, and that makes more sense when I flip it over once again here's all my buttons installed here's all the switches installed I have them all going in a certain direction um, when I go to wire it I may find out I need them all pointing this way or I'll point that way I'll make that adjustment when I do the jam or harness uh, I had an issue here I had a uh, player one and player two but it's both pointing into the same way so I had to take the button apart for player one and twist it around and reinstall it and uh, that's pretty easy to do um, I'll show you a clip here in a second on how to do it so next up is I've got to measure my joysticks go here and here I got to uh, measure to make sure that the plate for the joystick will fit in here without touching any of the buttons All right, I have a spare button here so this button type of button doesn't matter but if you have a one with an icon on it like a player one or player two or player three uh, you may find out that it's not positioned right you either got to make the, the switch on the back uh, line up for wiring you either got this upwards or downwards or sideways and you need to take this part out and twist it around so the way to do that is here are those feet I keep talking about that presses the button is a better view see the feet going up and down well you just take those feet inside of there there's also a spring and that's underneath this button so you just take the feet you pinch them together and then you can pull this button out like that and there's your spring and then you just twist this 180 degrees uh, and you just shove it back in there 
and it comes back together. So that's how you disassemble a button to move the icon around so that you can get the switch on the back uh, set up for wiring. All right, next I want to show you how to uh, verify the templates and the joysticks are going to fit in here. So uh, you need to, this doesn't fit through the, the red ball won't fit through there. So you have to grab the stem, stem of the joystick and unscrew the red ball. It comes off. Uh, this little dust cover comes off. And this, so by the way, when this is applied to the underside of your control panel, this will go on top of the control panel. And it's got a little ridge on it. The ridge goes on the top. All right, so well, the only two holes I got left in my control panel are for the joysticks. So I'm just gonna make sure that these fit. And yep, I got room to, to uh, install the joystick there, the template there, or the, and I got it there. Okay. So at this point, I'm going to uh, break away. I won't film this, but I'm going to get um, a hold. I'll hold this. I've actually got something to hold it where I can look underneath of it. And what I'm looking for is to make sure this is centered. So if this isn't centered and I install it, it could be a problem. So I want to make sure this is centered and then I'm going to mark the four holes and I'll pre-drill them and then I'll come back and screw this in. But I've got a stand uh, where I'm going to set this on top of like this and it will allow me to look underneath of it to make sure it's centered and then I'll mark my where my four drill for my four screws will go into and I'll pre-drill it and then because uh, I don't want to split this wood. All right, in this video, I just wanted to show you how I uh, determine how to make the holes for my joystick. So I've got just two uh, TV dinner tables right there, and I space them apart, and I place my control panel on it. And then I remember I want to get this rod centered in that hole. So I put it on there like that, and then I climb underneath the table, and I look straight up. And it made sure that rod was centered. Um, what's nice on this control panel is there's lines going this way and this way, and it really and that goes with the motion for you know left and right, up and down. So it makes it a little bit easier uh, to determine if you got it straight. You know, last thing you do is you want this thing cattywonker, and it, you got and next thing you know you got a joystick that's mimicking Cubert when you want something to go horizontal or vertical instead of sideways. So uh, the control panel graphics helped out. So I lined it up and then I took a Sharpie out and I just put dots in there and I, I came over and I did the same over here for this other joystick and marked it. So then I went to another one of my arcade one-up cabinets and I took it apart that had a joystick and found out that the screw was a, a half inch long wood screw uh, kind of thin thread. I've got a bunch of these from all my years of doing pinball. So um, if I go up to Lowe's and get some, I'll give you the part number and package number later on in the video. But so it's a half inch long wood screw. So then I took my drill, my drill bit, and I marked it off on tape. So this is not longer than a half inch. So um, I want a pilot drill. Once again, this drill bit is not thicker than the screw either. So I just want to make sure that I don't drill accidentally all the way through my control panel or the sides of my cabinet when I put the uh, 19 and one board when I mount it to the side of the cabinet or when I mount the uh, uh, amplifier or the power supply to the base. I don't want those screw holes going all the way through the cabinet. So I just put a piece of tape here to mark, you know, um, I, don't, I don't know, that's, uh, it's less than a half inch. How about that? So I, I just put that up there. And remember, the joystick plate is going to bring that up even more. So this should be pretty good. All right. And then you just drill it. 
and you drill down uh, to the tape. And that's the pilot holes that I'll use to mount the screws in there. So uh, uh, the screws that will hold the joystick. So that's the process you do. All right, I'm back from, I've drilled my four pilot holes. And once again, you drill the pilot holes so you don't split the wood. Uh, and I, I made sure that the drill bit didn't go too far down because I don't want to drill through the control panel. Uh, then I went ahead and installed my um, joysticks and then you flip it over this is what it looks like so I've got the full range of eight-way up down left right angles same way with over here you know left to right up and down uh, at all the angles you know so that's all set to go so um, I'll put the dust covers back on here and the red balls I'll flip it over and I'll start wiring it in for the JAMA harness all right here's a tip for you here on the right this is the dust cover for a joystick the, the one I ordered the classic red ball and it's for a real arcade game and here's the dust cover it comes from the joysticks from arcade one up this came off uh, actually uh, came off my rampage or my uh, space invaders but uh so you can see the size difference and you might think that the holes are the same for the rod for the joysticks but you might think what's the big deal well if i put this big one on here i start hiding some of my graphics if i put the small one on there now i can see the graphics all around and if i put this big one on my uh, space invaders it does hide the word control at the bottom but if i put this on my uh uh, but rampage it doesn't really have any of the artwork so that's nice and then if you look over here I got the big one on and it's had a little bit of the left and a little bit of the right but there's the word fire down here it's also hiding so if I pull it up and I, I put the rampage one underneath of it you can see where you can see more artwork so I'm gonna go with putting the arcade one up dust covers with their joysticks on here and then I'll put these on my these two on my rampage and uh, nobody will ever know the difference. And I think it will help people visually when they play this, uh, this game with this control panel. All right, I got the red toppers installed on my control panel, the joysticks. And of course I use the smaller dust covers from the uh, arcade one up rampage. So the top side of this control panel is ready to go. Now we're off to do the back side, the JAMA harness. <laughs> That wraps up this video, part two, that shows how to convert an arcade one-up cabinet to use the Beyond Arcade 1901 Classic Arcade Horizontal Games PCB. Be sure to watch the next video in this series where I'll show you how to attach the JAMA harness and I'll go over the power supply and all the components associated with it. For automatic updates when I add content to my YouTube channel, go ahead and subscribe to it. Click on that red subscribe button and ring that bell. If you like this video, then click on the thumbs up. If you dislike this video, click on the thumbs down. Please leave any positive feedback you have in the comment section below. Alright, thanks for watching.